Howdy, it's Tubal Kane, and this is day five of the build of the little uh, dynamo. And be sure and watch the other videos if you haven't already looked at them. But today I'm ready to start erecting. I have finished the stator and the armature, and I'm trying to decide now where to position this on this little cast base that I talked about before. And what I've come up with here is that I'm using these little bearings which have not been machined yet. They're just roughed out. And these are from another project, but uh, they should suit this just fine. But I want one to be about there and one to be about there with a little room left over for uh, this pulley, which will uh, allow me to belt drive this from one of my little engines. And then I want to leave some space on the corner here for a little light post that I hope to build, something like this. Only mine will have an LED. I like that little boss they got on there. That's a Jensen, by the way. So, the first thing I will do here is to uh, put a couple marks where I'm going to put the, the stator here. Square it up with a little square. Then I will transfer one hole with a transfer punch. Drill, tap, put a screw in. These are 832s. And then double check it with a square. Make sure that it truly is square. And then transfer the other hole. That's my order of operations. And notice that I've left enough space in here. Maybe I need a little bit more. Because that's where the brushes are going to go. And the brush holder. Similar to this if you haven't looked at the other parts. The brass brushes. All right, I'm going to get started. This is the way I'm going to build it. And I've already drilled and reamed the bearing uh, holders here, but they're way too high yet, so they have to be trimmed off. But as I told you here, the first thing I'm going to do is, after I've decided where I'm going to position the stator, is transfer this hole. As such, and now I'll go ahead and drill and tap that. And now I think you can see why I located these base holes such that I can transfer them. The transfer punch fits in there without interference here, as will the screwdriver when I drive the screws. Now the purpose of the little red perimeter line here is just temporary so I do not drill halfway looking at the bottom here, and, and have a hole partially through that thick part and partially in the thin part. Not that it would hurt, but it can break a drill bit, and it's unsightly if I look at the bottom. Not that I should care in any way what the bottom looks like, any more than you care what the bottom of your couch looks like. One hole drilled, I like to square it up like that. Plenty of clearance here from a screwdriver. Notice how I mark it. There's an X there. And I like to reassemble it the same way I took it apart. And then from this side, of course, transfer this one. If you're new to my videos and have never seen transfer punches or know how to transfer holes with transfer punches and transfer screws, be sure and refer back to another video where I covered that because I'm just skimming over that now. But I prefer to transfer holes rather than to lay them out according to a drawing because I don't have a drawing. So uh, that's just my preference, but you can do it either way. Now, I uh, have this fastened down, but the bearings here are not fastened, nor have they been trimmed for the overall height. And uh, that's kind of a difficult thing to determine now. What, what is the center height of the stator? in relationship to uh, what I need to cut off here on the bottom. And, and really, these are way too high. So let me work on that a little bit off camera. 
You know, what I'm showing you here is a bit obtuse, but I'm using my two little Sterrett toolmaker's clamps here with uh, temporary bearings, and by that means I'm able to measure the top, or the distance from the surface plate to the top of a shaft. Now I would deduct the radius of the shaft, and uh, from the reading that I have on the height gauge, the Mitutoyu, and that would determine how much I have to trim off the bottom. Now I know that seems a little difficult and that probably could be done by a bagues and bagash method. Even something like this with this hanging over the edge and scribing it down here. Then uh, trimming it off erecting the thing and deciding whether it's too high or too low but you don't want to take too much off or you'd have to either make new bearings or shim a little bit on the bottom. And there isn't a whole lot of clearance in here between the armature and the stator. All right the bottom of the bearings have been machined and it spins freely and using a small drill bit as a feeler gauge I have determined that the space on both the top and the bottom between uh, the armature and the stator is pretty much the same. So now back to the erecting but before let me just show you one other thing here. When I milled these off I wanted them as a perfect pair and I, I know I'm not going to show that and somebody's going to say why didn't you show that but I put a little scrap shaft in there and then it was held in the Bridgeport vise as such and they were milled as a pair, so they're the exact same height. Notice now that I have uh, drilled the holes in the base pieces and only one in each uh, bearing. It would look better if there were two and they were probably smaller screws, but uh, I'm just going to use one and I also like the idea that with just one, if necessary, I can pivot ever so slightly to get my alignment. And now the problem is to lay out those holes, transfer those holes with the shaft perpendicular to the bore of the stator and also aligned this way so that I have equal space here and here, here and here and uh, of course I'm going to do that off camera because it's kind of tricky and a little bit of trial and error and judgment and experience involved in doing that and if you're a new model maker uh, you know you're probably going to make errors I make now, errors uh, too. Now we have uh, some success here this is this is just fine but I don't want an end play, or I don't want very much of an end play, maybe a half a millimeter or so. So how can you take up the end play? Well, if there isn't much, you can use the ever popular red fiber washers, and they come in different sizes. I buy them from McMaster Car, by the bag full, quite handy. But I have a little bit more end play than that, although I could use probably several right here, two or three together. But another solution is to use the brass tubing, the ever popular brass tubing, which uh, is available at any hardware store. And I really do like this, although it's kind of hard to work with. Uh, you really need to cut it off with a jeweler's saw. But that can be cut to length. But as you can imagine, a short piece is difficult to handle. And so I need uh, spacer in here and over here. Another solution is this uh, vinyl tubing which is available in hardware departments and that will fit right over the shaft. You could use that black tubing also, that vacuum tubing, but that's a little bit cloudy looking. So just to speed things up and to show you a variety here, although some of you may object to using plastic like this in a model, but I'm going to cut this off. It's kind of hard to get the, the end square and uh, put one piece right in there. 
I've taken care of the end thrust, end play, and I've used the vinyl tubing. There's a little piece of it here, and there's even a shorter piece up here. How did you cut them off square, you say? Well, I just developed a technique here. Take it for what it's worth, but here's a little uh, lathe chuck, and I am holding, or I held, the vinyl tubing just on a little piece of 3 16 shaft, rod, put it in the lathe, the atlas lathe, and then very carefully with the lathe turned on, cut it off using a handy knife here as a cut off tool. Kind of dangerous, be careful, but that gives you a nice square end. I tried belt sanding and it, it leaves an incredibly bad uh, messy vinyl burr and I measured the length of what I needed just with the small uh, inside caliper. That part is done. I'm ready to start building the brushes. I suppose there's many people out there that do not know what I'm talking about when I say uh, motor brushes are made of carbon or sometimes maybe graphite, but if you haven't had an electric motor apart that uses brushes or a generator, they are nothing more than these uh, pieces of carbon, and usually they're curved to fit the, a commutator like that, and held in with springs and they came in different sizes. Starters used big fat ones with big leads, but naturally we're not going to get into to, uh, making something like that. I'm going to use brass brushes like you saw on uh, the other school samples that I had. So that's what I'm going to make and they're simple enough, but remember that these have to be insulated from the motor itself. Now I had a wooden base here so there was no need for insulation, but I will have to isolate them if you will. For my brushes I like to use this tempered shim stock and that's available in different thicknesses. This is an assortment. Do not use copper. It's too dead soft. It conducts the electricity fine but it's too soft. So here is what I use on the other ones and that happens to be 10,000 thick and I bought this at Ace Hardware long enough ago to where this only cost 98 cents and where they still put uh, tags on things without UPC codes and uh, so you know this has been around for a while and I bought that from Ace Hardware during a time when hardware stores were getting rid of merchandise that did not move quickly so you won't find this anymore because they they would look at you quizzically if you asked for shim stock so it would have to be ordered more than likely you don't have any around the house but there are probably other materials that you could use but this is what I like but I lament the days of uh, losing the hardware stores that, that had all of the obscure items. You know, if something's on the shelf for more than 90 days or whatever their formula is, they're losing money on it. So it has to be fast moving merchandise and I am a man of many lamentations. This is a piece of PVC which is the insulator and uh, now that I've got it installed it looks kind of out of proportion and big and cloddy but it'll have to do at least for now and that is the base for the brushes and I have cut out a paper just a sample and that's about what the brush is going to look like matter of fact that's exactly what it's going to look like and I have to make two of those now out of uh, this 10,000 thick shim stock that I showed you a few moments ago I would like to hold it down with brass screws I'm having a heck of a time finding any brass screws around here even though I have at least one million fasteners in stock but yet never the right ones. One brush down and one to go. I cut the brass into uh, strips 3 8 wide. I've got a nice little shear for that. Laid it out just like what you see here. Cut it with the heavy uh, shears but unfortunately it wants to bend and curl on you like a potato chip. So I did get it straightened out fairly well. 
I punched the hole eighth inch with a Whitney punch and then I've got a bend to make yet and then that's all there is to it and I got two brushes made I'm progressing nicely now you can see that the new brushes are in place held with uh, 632 brass screws and they are threaded into the uh, PVC into a blind hole so they are insulated from uh, the machine itself and I've got uh, steel nuts on there I gotta get some brass nuts those look terrible but uh, take a look at those brushes the way they rub against the commutator this thing is just about ready to test drive and I'm going upstairs to watch the Super Bowl and eat chicken wings. Be sure and join me in the next video where I hope to test run this thing. So long for now.